This is an interesting pistol with a sorted lineage. A Chinese gun that's a civilianized copy of a Chinese copy of a Russian pistol. I'm Jim Humphrey with Imminent Threat Defense Firearms Training, and this is the Norinco 213 9mm semi automatic pistol. Manufactured for export and sold into the U.S. in the 1990s for less than $100. Originally based on the famous Takarov TT-33, the Chinese copied it for their military and then later civilianized it by chambering it in 9mm and adding a safety. So we have one here that's new in the box. Let's take it apart. As always, ensure the safety is engaged Keep your finger off the trigger, keep the firearm pointed in a safe direction, and check and double check the pistol is empty. Ensure all live ammunition is removed from the work area. To remove the slide stop lever, the retention clamp on the right side needs to be pulled back. Here, I use a non-marring nylon tool to assist. Remove the slide stop lever by pressing on the right and pulling from the left. The slide stop lever can be removed without relocating the slide. The slide comes off from the front. Be careful to retain the recoil spring. With the slide removed, carefully release the recoil spring. Rotate the bushing 180 degrees and remove the barrel and bushing. The hammer and sear pull out of the pistol as a group by lowering the hammer and just lifting it out. The grips are removed by sliding a lever inside the left panel from front to rear. This lever can be seen better with the grip removed. The right panel has a similar locking system, but it can only be accessed with the left panel removed. The slide has two pins, one for the extractor and one for the firing pin. Remove the extractor pin from the bottom. Keep a little pressure on the extractor the extractor removes easily. In a pocket under the extractor is a very small extractor spring. Remove the firing pin retaining pin from left to right. This is critical because this is a tapered pin. Keep a little pressure on the firing pin when removing the punch to control the spring. Note, the firing pin spring is the same on both ends, so it goes back either way. The firing pin retaining notch is turned towards the top of the slide and the ret retaining pin starts easily from right to left. With a little pressure on the retaining pin, I push the firing pin in till the notch lines up with the retaining pin. Insert the extractor spring and hand start the extractor pin from the top. A little pressure on the extractor should line up the hole. Be careful not to overdrive the pin. Make it flush inside the slide. Ensure it does not extend beyond the bottom of the slide, even if it protrudes from the top of the slide. Here, I'm sliding a brass punch along the bottom of the slide so I can make sure the pin isn't protruding. The hammer sear group is difficult to disassemble. For normal cleaning, I'd leave it one piece. But for demonstration purposes, I'll go ahead and take it apart. There are two pins that can be removed, the hammer pin, the sear pin. This fixed pin can't be easily removed and the very powerful hammer spring is behind it. I first remove the hammer pin and leave the punch in place.
then orient the spring so when I pull the punch, the spring releases downward into the block and not across the room. I also get a good grip on the hammer and keep it from flying up into my face. The sear pin is a little easier. The sear pin comes out with a few light taps and the sear and safety remove easily. Here, I show the correct orientation of the parts. The safety is going to go into this hole, and the sear spring is going to fit into the slot. I found it easier to install the hammer first. I install the hammer spring in the hammer, and then set the spring against the bar. By pressing down on the hammer, I align the hole and use an alignment drift to hold the hammer in place. I pull the drift back far enough to start the hammer pin. I'm being very careful to cover the spring and the hammer in case I slip and pull the alignment drift all the way out. This would cause the parts to fly off at a dangerous speed. The hammer pin is tapped into place, chasing the alignment drift out of the hole. This is the orientation of the safety and sear. The safety is inserted before the sear. To align the sear, I put the hammer in a hole in the block and then shift the frame which pulls the hammer back slightly, then install the sear. Making sure to fit the sear spring in the slot and use an alignment drift to hold the parts in place. Then chase the alignment drift with the sear pin. The frame disassembly starts with the magazine spacer pin and the magazine spacer. Then the very small, very easy to lose, irreplaceable backstop screw for the safety. I leave the front one in place. The safety is removed by moving it back past the stop screw position and pulling it out. There is a detent ball that should remain in place. The trigger and trigger spring just slide out. The trigger spring has to be compressed so the back of the trigger can be pulled down and rotated out. The trigger spring is removed by lifting up on the top of the spring and sliding the bottom out from underneath the retaining bar. Notice the orientation of the notch in the spring. The magazine release looks a lot like a 1911 mag release, but it is a split pin even though it looks like a screw. It is removed with a brass punch. Then there's a collar on the right side that will just fall out. The assembly is just the reverse. Install the collar on the right side, then the release from the left, and give it a couple of taps. Always use brass or plastic tools for this kind of work. trigger leaf spring hooks under the cross pin so that it stands off from the frame at the top. And the hammer just slides back in. The safety has kind of a tab and slot fit. Truth is, given the small parts involved here, I wouldn't take the safety off again. And of course, don't forget to replace the very small, very easy to lose, irreplaceable 
uh, backstop screw for the safety. The magazine spacer and pin complete the assembly of the frame. Note the orientation of the top of the magazine spacer. All that remains is the field strip assembly. Replace the grips in the reverse order. They generally fit pretty tight, but don't use too much force, the grips break easily. In particular, don't press on the edges of the grips. Press them down from the center. The hammer group drops straight back in. The hammer needs to be cocked and the safety engaged. The barrel is inserted into the slide from the front. Notice the barrel link. Once the slide is on the frame, it's going to have to be lined up for the slide stop lever. Note the concave spot on the recoil spring guide. That side goes against the barrel. The recoil spring is inserted and the slide pulled onto the frame. The slide stop hole is lined up with the barrel link and the slide stop lever is inserted through the frame so that it goes through the link in the barrel. The retention clip holds the slide stop lever in place. The recoil spring has to be compressed in order to rotate the barrel bushing. I'm careful to keep that spring pointed in a safe direction. Not much to it, but that's what you'd expect from a essentially 1930s Soviet design. I'm Jim Humphrey with Eminent Threat Defense Firearms Training. Until next time, enjoy your firearms, join the NRA, and stay safe out there. Thanks.